Hello to the second part of chapter 36 of Moby Dick by Herman Melville. And this chapter is titled The Quarter Deck, Enter Ahab, Then All. And I'll continue well, a sentence or so before I stop the last time. Ay, ay, shouted the harponeers and seamen, running closer to the excited old man. A sharp eye for the white whale, a sharp lance for Moby Dick. God bless ye. He seemed to half sob and half shout. God bless ye, men. Steward, go draw the great measure of grog. But what's this long face about, Mr. Starbuck? Wilt thou not chase the white whale? Art not game for Moby Dick? I am game for his crooked jaw and for the jaws of death too, Captain Ahab, if it fairly comes in the way of the business we follow. But I came here to hunt whales, not my commander's vengeance. How many barrels will thy vengeance yield thee even if thou gettest it, Captain Ahab? It will not fetch thee much in our Nantucket market. Nantucket market, hoot! But come closer, Starbuck. Thou requirest a little lower layer. If money's to be the measure of man, and the accountants have computed their great counting house, the globe, by girdling it with guineas, one to every three parts of an inch, then let me tell thee that my vengeance will fetch a great premium here. He smites his chest, whispered Stop. What's that for? Methinks it rings most vast but hollow. Vengeance on a dumb brute, cried Starbuck. That simply smote thee from blindest instinct madness. To be enraged with a dumb thing, Captain Ahab, seems blasphemous. Hark ye, yet again, the little lower layer. All visible objects, man, are bought as pasteboard masks. But in each event, in the living act, the undoubted deed there, some unknown but still reasoning thing puts forth the mouldings of its features from behind the unreasoning mask. If man will strike, strike through the mask. How can the prisoner reach outside except by thrusting through the wall? To me, the white whale is that wall, shoved near to me. Sometimes I think there's naught beyond. But tis enough. He tasks me, he heaps me. I see in him outrageous strength with an inscrutable malice, sign wing it. That inscrutable thing is chiefly what I hate. And be the white whale agent or be the white whale principal, I will wreak that hate upon him. Talk not to me of blasphemy, man. I'd strike the sun if it insulted me. For could the sun do that, then could I do the other. Since there is ever a sort of fair play herein, jealousy presiding over all creations. But not my master, man, is even that fair play. Who's over me? Truth hath no confines. Take off thine eye. More intolerable than fiends' glarings is a doltish stare. So, so, thou reddenst and palest. My heat has melted thee to anger glow. But look ye, Starbuck, what is said in heat, that thing unsays itself. There are men from whom warm words are small indignity. I mean not to incense thee. Let it go. Look, see yonder Turkish cheeks of spotted tawn, living, breathing pictures painted by the sun, the pagan leopards, the unwrecking and unworshipping things that live and seek and give no reasons for the torrid life they feel. The cruel man, the cruel, are they not one and all with Ahab in this matter of the whale? See, stop, he laughs. See yonder Chilean, he snorts to think of it. Stand up amid the general hurricane. Thy one tossed sapling cannot, Starbuck. And what is it? Reckon it. Tis but to help strike a fin. No wondrous feat for Starbuck. What is it more? From this one poor hunt, then, the best lance out of Nantucket, surely he will not hang back when every foremast hand has clutched a whetstone. Ah! 
constrainings seize thee. I see the billow lifts thee. Speak, but speak. Aye, aye. Thy silence, then, that voices thee. Something shot from my dilated nostrils. He has inhaled it in his lungs. Starbuck now is mine, cannot oppose me now without rebellion. God keep me, keep us all, murmured Starbuck lowly. But in his joy at the enchanted tacit acquiescence of the mate, Ahab did not hear his foreboding invocation, nor yet the low laugh from the hold, nor yet the presaging vibrations of the winds in the cordage, nor yet the hollow flap of the sails against the masts, as for a moment their hearts sank in, for again Starbuck's downcast eyes lighted up with the stubbornness of life. The subterranean laugh died away, the winds blew on, the sails filled out, the ship heaved and rolled as before. Ah, ye admonitions and warnings, why stay ye not when ye come? But rather are ye predictions than warnings, ye shadows, yet not so much predictions from without as verifications of the foregoing things within. For, with little external to constrain us, the innermost necessities in our being, these still drive us on. The measure, the measure, cried Ahab. Receiving the brimming pewter and turning to the harponeers, he ordered them to produce their weapons. Then, ranging them before him near the capstan with their harpoons in their hands, while his three mates stood at his side with their lances and the rest of the ship's company, formed a circle round the group. He stood for an instant, searchingly eyeing every man of his crew, but those wild eyes met his as the bloodshot eyes of the prairie wolves met the eye of their leader, ere he rushes on their head in the trail of the bison, but alas, only to fall into the hidden snare of the Indian. Drink and pass, he cried, handing the heavy charged flagon to the nearest seaman. The crew alone now drink, round with it, round! Short draughts, long swallows, men! "'Tis hot as Satan's hoof, so, so. "'It goes round excellently. "'It spiralizes in ye, "'forks out at the serpent's snapping eye. "'Well done, almost drained. "'That way it went, this way it comes. "'Hand it me, here's a hollow. "'Man, ye seem the years so brimming, "'life is gulped and gone. "'Steward, refill!' Attend now, my braves, I have mustered ye all round this capstan, and ye mates flank me with your lances, and ye harponeers stand there with your irons, and ye stout mariners ring me in, that I may in some sort revive a noble custom of my fishermen fathers before me. O oh, man, you will yet see that. Ha! Boy, come back. Bad pennies come not sooner. Hand it me. Why? Now, this pewter had run brimming again, wert not thou St. Vitus' imp. Away, thou ague! Advance, ye mates, cross your lances full before me. Well done, let me touch the axis. So saying, with extended arm, he grasped the three levels radiating lances at their crossed center, while so doing, suddenly and nervously twitched them, meanwhile glancing intently from starbuck to stub, from stub to flask. It seemed as though by some nameless interior volition he would fain have shocked into them the same fiery emotion accumulated within the laden jar of his own magnetic life. The three mates quailed before his strong, sustained and mystic aspect. Stubb and Flask looked sideways from him. The honest eye of Starbuck fell downright. In vain, cried Ahab, but maybe tis well, for did ye three but once take the full force shock than mine own electric thing that had perhaps expired from out me. 
perchance too, it would have dropped ye dead, perchance ye need it not. Down, lances! And now, ye mates, I do appoint ye three cupbearers to my three pagan kinsmen. There, yon three most honourable gentlemen and noblemen, my valiant harponeers. Disdain the task? What? When the great Pope washes the feet of beggars using his tiara for your... O oh, my sweet cardinals, your own condescension, that shall bend ye to it. I do not order ye. Ye will it. Cut your seizings and draw the poles. Ye harpeneers. Silently obeying the order, the three harpeneers now stood with a detached iron part of their harpoons, some three feet long, held barbs up before him. Stab me not with that keen steel, cant them, cant them over. Know ye not the goblet end? Turn up the socket, so, so. Now ye cup-bearers advance, the irons, take them, hold them while I fill. Forthwith, slowly going from one officer to the other, he brimmed the harpoon sockets with the fiery waters from the pewter. Now. Three to three ye stand, commend the murderous chalices, bestow them, ye who are now made parties to this indissoluble league. Ha, Starbuck! But the deed is done. Yon ratifying sun now waits to sit upon it. Drink, ye harpeneers, drink and swear to ye man that man the deathful whaleboat's bow. Death to Moby Dick! God hunt us all if we do not hunt Moby Dick to his death. The long barbed steel goblets were lifted, and to cries and maledictions against the white whale the spirits were simultaneously quaffed down with a hiss. Starbuck paled and turned and shivered. Once more, and finally, the replenished pewter went the rounds among the frantic crew when waving his free hand to them, they all dispersed, and Ahab retired within his cabin. So that was for chapter 36. Bye-bye. Till next time with chapter 37, titled Sunset. <laughs>